We'd like to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. From our team to yours, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. From the station that's on your side, this is News 12, first at 5. Getting home for the holidays, it is time for millions to take to the skies or hit the roads to reunite with friends and family. Check out this sweet reunion we just saw today at Augusta Regional Airport. So many people excited. Look, there was even a therapy dog there waiting. But we want to show you now a live look over I-20. If you're planning to drive to your holiday destination, we are on your side with the best times to get behind the wheel. According to AAA, if you're heading out tomorrow, the best time to do so is after 7 p.m. If you're traveling Christmas Eve, any time before 1 o'clock is your best bet. We know many of you will be catching flights, and that's why we have News 12 Celeste Springer live now from Augusta Regional. And Celeste, how are the lines looking out there today? Well, guys, pretty good news out here. If you're planning on traveling out tonight, the longest line here is for baggage or checking your bags, actually. That's American Airlines. Uh, there was a line, a little bit of a longer line here at Delta just a couple seconds ago, but they're clearing that out pretty fast. But come over here to security, and there's really nothing. There's no really line at all here. Um, and it's no lie that despite the no lines, it's pretty safe to say that travel this Christmas should shatter 2020 holiday travel numbers. Let's face it though, breaking those records isn't exactly hard to do because travel last year was pretty dismal. The increase in travel this year is still impressive though. Just yesterday, TSA screened, uh, the TSA screenings doubled the amount of passengers they did in the same day in 2020. Now we'll just need to wait until the end of the week to see how this lines up with Thanksgiving, but the crowds might be thinner comparatively. We have seen a slow trickle. Normally, Thanksgiving, we see a rush a couple days, and for Christmas, it's a slow trickle, you know, in and out. Everybody's planning around their Christmas break, but it is a popular travel season, and the airlines, they have been almost completely booked, which we're happy to, to see. And I'll be camped out here updating you guys on all of these lines. And coming up at 6 o'clock, I'm also working on a story about how some volunteers here at the airport are working to make the holiday season and traveling a lot less stressful. And they have four legs, I'm told. Celeste, you know we always love stories like that. Can't wait to see those cute pups. All right, taking you back out live to I-20. All right, thank you, Riley. A Burke County family still in the hospital tonight after a deadly crash on Highway 25. It happened Monday afternoon, just before 3 o'clock, right near the Burke County Airport. Georgia State Troopers tell us the Overstreet family was driving southbound when it rear-ended a tractor trailer and burst into flames. Three-year-old Grayson Overstreet was pronounced dead on scene. Today, we can confirm the mother and father, Amber and Davy Overstreet, are still in critical condition. We know Grayson's four-year-old brother is also in the hospital with serious injuries. We're still working to find out more about how he's doing. Officials tell us no one inside the car was wearing a seatbelt at the time of the crash. Developing out of Savannah tonight, a suspect is dead after allegedly swinging a knife at officers. The GBI identifying the man as 45-year-old Sean Martin. Officials say they were investigating an aggravated assault incident where the victim suffered multiple skull fractures and had her car stolen, and they believe Martin had that car. When they searched the home he was in, they say he came out swinging a knife. Two officers then fired their weapons after they say he did not comply. This marks the 97th officer-involved shooting in the state of Georgia just this year. A Metro Atlanta community is mourning after the death of a high school star quarterback. Robbie Roper was a senior at Roswell High School with offers to play college ball. He died today after anesthesia complications from a shoulder surgery. His family just tweeting this this afternoon about his passing. They say they are proud of the young man he has become and say he will be missed dearly by his friends and family. We know you hear a lot her injury to help inspire others. But first, three days from Christmas, we know so many of you are getting ready to take off for your holiday destination. So let's lead things off with First Alert Chief Meteorologist Riley Hale. Riley, what can people expect out on cross occasions and civil litigation involving the U.S. within the state of South Carolina? 
One local seven-year-old is doing well after she got second-degree burns on her hands, shoulder, and her back. Tanika White tells us she was making ramen noodles when the water was too hot and it spilled on her. So she took to social media, making a TikTok, praying for everyone who has been burned. Her mom says simple things like that can change your life. I know as parents, it's kind of hard to be there by your child's side 24 seven. Um, all I say is just take that extra moment to think about some of the, th the items that you're uh, you allowing them to warm up or to fix. We found over the last three years, 54% of pediatric burns sent to Burn and Reconstructive Centers of America were serious burns. Ramen noodles, coffee, tea, or even bath water were the leading culprits. We're going to hear much more about Tanika's story in the next half hour coming up on News 12 at 6 o'clock. Christmas came a few days early for some kids in Orangeburg. Police officers gave away bikes last night. As Lauren Adams shows us, they hope kids came away with two positive things. One Orangeburg grandfather was so happy to see his grandchildren get new bikes, he couldn't stop smiling. She was excited, and I, that's a blessing that y'all are out here doing this for the kids. The Department of Public Safety refurbished donated bikes and gave them to 38 kids as part of their Christmas donations. The children of all ages got to test them out and pick their very own bike and meet some police officers in the process. Now this gives them an opportunity to see uh, the police officers in a different light, especially the young people coming through, uh, uh, being able to get close to them, you know, shake their hands and maybe talk to them, uh, and, and, and they give them some type of encouragement. This is an extension of the public safety's Working for Wheels program, where officers give refurbished bikes to students all year who make good grades and have good behavior. The city also gives bikes to adults to use for transportation, and Officer Lucas is always looking for donations. We take bikes all the time. You know, if we run out of room, we'll make room. That's great news for families this Christmas. I, I thank the fire department and public safety for them doing this for the kids in the neighborhood and may they have a merry christmas and a happy new year and you know those kids are happy boy when i was a kid that meant freedom it was almost like a car right good for those kids all right coming up your go-to gift might be a target for scammers what you need to do to avoid it or report next how do you get to our christmas day to Heading into our Christmas day, it is going to be much warmer than average, but also getting pretty gusty out there. We'll take a look at a breezy Christmas day just after the break. The matter is, and that warm air looks to stick around as we head into next week as well. All right, thank you, Riley. Marie Andrews lost her dog, Rita, a few weeks ago in Grovetown. She has been looking all over Wrightsboro Road where she last saw her. This is near Bellevue Cemetery in Steed's Dairy Farm. She says this week someone contacted her claiming he had her dog. She says he wanted the $35 portion of her reward before he would send her a picture to prove it. She paid that using Cash App, but then she says he demanded more money. I said, send me the, the picture like you promised. I said, I did what you asked of me. Now you do what I asked of you. And he wouldn't do it. So that's when we knew it was a scam. Oh, that's just heartbreaking. We'll bring you her full story coming up tomorrow. If you see her dog, you are asked to call her. That number is on your screen. I also have shared this post on my Facebook page. There is a $1,000 reward on the table. Especially during the holidays, gift cards can be a go-to gift. But the Federal Trade Commission tells our national investigative team that gift cards are a hit for scammers, too. I know, it sounds obvious to avoid, but it is one of the top ways scammers hit every year. Investigate TV Sandra Jones has this warning. According to retail experts, gift card spending is expected to jump by 27% this year because of the ongoing supply chain issues and product shortages. But the Federal Trade Commission says about one in four people have reported losing money to scammers after purchasing gift cards. A lot of times, like, these people are professionals, right? I mean, it's what they do for a living, eight hours a day. Their whole goal is to scam people. Mark Labriola found out the hard way that you can't trust anyone who asks you to pay with a gift card. While trying to advertise his business, Labriola got locked out of his social media account. He Googled the number for customer support and reached who he thought 
was the company rep on the other end of the call. They said, hey, we need to uh, make sure that you are who you say you are, and the only way you can do that is if you go purchase some gift cards, and uh, then we can verify, oh, those are purchased in your location, and then we can you know, unlock your account. Labriola said he purchased one set of gift cards, then called the company. A rep told him to buy more and that the gift cards needed to be in a four-pack. Well, he did and called back a third time, giving the rep the PIN numbers on the back of the cards. Then it hit him. And I was like, oh, crap, like, I just got scammed. And they tried calling me back, and I, like, you know, denied the call. And then I instantly was trying to call the gift card, you know, company to be like, Hey, and they're like, oh, sorry, all these gift cards have been zeroed out. Like, you know, there's nothing that we can do. Labriola said he lost hundreds of dollars that day. The FTC says people have reported losing a total of nearly $245 million since 2018. With that in mind, Scamspotter.org, an online consumer advocacy organization, wants you to follow these tips to avoid getting taken by sophisticated gift card scammers. First, slow it down. Scammers often create a sense of urgency so that they can bypass your better instincts. Take your time. Spot check. Do your research to double check the details you're getting. And stop. Don't send. Often fraudsters tell you to go buy gift cards, which are meant only to be given as a gift, not as payment under a threat. Gift cards and green dot cards, those are always red flags in stories like these. The Federal Trade Commission says if you paid someone with a gift card by giving them the numbers on the card, keep the card and your receipt and you need to report it to the credit card issuer right away. Then report it to the FTC at reportfraud.ftc.gov. Coming up, are those empty shipping boxes starting to pile up at home? Don't throw them away. We'll show you how you can use them to help others coming up. Plus, the Gamecocks made history last night in the win against Stanford. How the smallest player on the court made the biggest impact. When you call my dad. A fight to the finish. The two best teams in women's basketball putting on a show last night. It was South Carolina versus Stanford with the Gamecocks coming out on top. Here's sports director Nick Proto. Nick, you say the girls made history. That's right, Meredith. The Gamecocks erased an 18-point deficit last night, the biggest comeback in program history. The driving force behind this win was senior guard Destiny Henderson, who's been out the last month with an injury. Henderson had 17 points in the win, including 13 in that pivotal third quarter. At just five foot seven, she's the smallest player on the team, but she had the biggest impact on the court last night. Henderson's been out since November 29th with a leg injury, and she was a game time decision last night and ended up being the difference in the revenge win over Stanford. Lenny, when she got hurt, um, I mean, she did she did what she had to do to get better quickly. And she's been in these situations before, and um, I know it, you know, she want, she wanted to help us win when she was out and she bottled it up and, and performed at the, at the time that we really needed her to perform. With the win, South Carolina now has five wins this season over top 10 teams, including two over the number two team in the country. They left no doubt about who deserves to be at the top of the rankings as they look for their first national title since 2017. All right, thanks for that, Nick. Big news for anyone with student loan debt. This afternoon, President Joe Biden announced he would extend the pause on student loan payments. You now don't have to pay through May 1st. Paybacks were supposed to start back in February. This pause keeps just about anyone with a federal student loan from having to make payments, and interest on them is still frozen, too. With Christmas just three days away, we know plenty of you are racking up packages, but what do you do with all those empty boxes when you're done? Here's our consumer tech reporter, Jamie Tucker, with how Amazon and other retailers are putting those boxes to good use. Every day, another Amazon box arrives. You may get dozens of them. So what do you do with them? Amazon has partnered with Give Back Box to help shoppers donate items they no longer need or want to charity. And it doesn't cost you anything for shipping or the shipping box. Here's how it works. Take one of those empty boxes and fill it with items you want to donate. Could be DVDs, household items, clothes, toys, even electronics. Then visit the website GiveBackBox.com to download a free shipping label. It won't cost you anything. Tape up the box, affix the shipping label, and then drop it off at a UPS store or schedule a pickup at your home for free. 
gift back box will route your donations to a local charity organization. And by the way, you can print out all the free shipping labels you want. There's no limit to your donations or goodwill. So declutter your closet. If you get a new charger or device for Christmas, box up the old one. And if the kids no longer play a game or with a toy, send that in. Just be sure they're not broken. I look around the house, give back box specifically asking for donations of Lego toys. This may be the easiest way to help someone over the holidays and recycle these boxes. That's what the tech. I'm Jamie Tucker. Not to mention, helps you get rid of clutter. Last year, Give Back Box received more than a million pounds of clothing and more than 50,000 pounds of Lego bricks for charity. You can download free shipping labels at givebackbox.com. Taking you outside now for a live... Only in theaters, December 17th. I'm predicting a wonderful 2022. Happy holidays. From the station that's on your side. This is News 12 at 6 o'clock. Deadly and destructive. At least 12 fires across the CSRA in just over two weeks. Five deaths and dozens of people out of homes. But who can they turn to once the dust settles? And the scars left on her back will take time to heal. But this local seven-year-old is using her pain and experience to help other burn victims. But first, we start tonight with a look at traffic and weather. Ten minutes. All right, thank you, Riley. Four fires across the CSRA in just the span of 48 hours. The latest one happening just this afternoon in Beach Island. Luckily, no one was hurt, but it comes at a time where officials say fires are on the rise. In just the last two weeks, five people have died in local house fires. And two weeks ago today, a fire at the Azalea Park Apartments in Augusta displaced 15 people. Our Kennedy Harris is live at the Azalea Park Apartments where the devastation is still clearly visible. Kennedy, a lot of these families are left picking up the pieces, but who are they turning to for help? Well, Zaina, there aren't many pieces left of the life they used to call home left here. It's mostly just rubble. Now, all of these families did receive help from the Red Cross, but once you lose everything, that help only goes so far. On the night of December 9th, Tony heard a knock on his door. When I came outside, it was full of smoke, and I came out and looked up, it was full of blaze. In a matter of minutes, he went from having a home to having nothing at all. What I'm going to do now, that's what my thoughts were. He and his teenage daughter were one of nine families put out of their home by a fire at Azalea Park Apartments. That was almost two weeks ago, and the days since have been his biggest challenge. You know, discouraging, a little painful. Hurtful. Can't go sit down and watch TV. You know, it's it's kind of hard. Same thing for the Jones family in Aiken. I'm just taking it day by day. They lost everything to a fire Saturday. Debbie, Johnny, and their six children escaped the flames with only the clothes on their body. What we still need, what we don't need, it would be the easier question. <laughs> everything we need. Both families received assistance from the Red Cross. Tony got around $800. The Jones got around $825. However, when you have nothing, that money goes fast. Pretty fast. Hotels cost a couple hundred dollars a day. Other than the Red Cross and Salvation Army, there aren't many avenues for immediate assistance after fires. However, both families got a hand from the community. The American Legion raised funds for the Azalea families, and the Aiken Housing Center is taking donations for the Jones. I think we've collected it with, uh, with everything, probably six, seven hundred hours right now so far. Just a small step on a long journey to rebuild the life they lost. And you can stop by the Aiken Housing Center and donate to the Jones family. As you heard, they pretty much need anything. And we'll have more information on our website about how you can help Azalea families and other fire victims. Thanks so much, Kennedy. A lot of families affected. An update now on how the family involved in a bad wreck in Burke County is doing. The Overstreet family was in a wreck Monday night outside of Waynesboro. Georgia troopers tell us their SUV rear-ended a tractor trailer and caught fire. Today, Amber Overstreet and her husband are still in the hospital in critical condition. Their three-year-old, Grayson, was killed. Grayson's four-year-old brother's in the hospital with serious injuries as well. We're still working to find out how he's doing. No one in the car was wearing a seatbelt or in a child restraint. A shooting in Augusta this morning ends with one person dead. Deputies tell us it happened here on Champaign Avenue, right across the street from AU's Forest Hills campus. Deputies got the call just after 1130. Not even an hour later, the victim was pronounced dead on scene.
Federal health officials are keeping a close eye on six percent of all local patients. An unfortunate accident changed this local seven-year-old for life. She now lives with scars after spilling boiling water on herself. Instead of living with the pain left by those marks, she's using it as a reminder to help others in similar situations. Our Will Ryu is live in the studio to show us how. Well, social media is used for so many reasons, whether that be good or bad. Little seven-year-old Tynika White, excuse me, made this TikTok, TikTok to try and help others who may have gone through the same traumatic experience that she did. Seven-year-old Tanika White is known as a diva, she just sounds so crazy. making sure her makeup's perfect before going on camera. But over the summer, she wasn't able to even do this. She was holding her hand. So I'm thinking she done smashed her hand in the door until when I got to her and I looked at the back, all I seen was pink. She suffered second-degree burns after boiling water from ramen noodles went on her hands, shoulder, and down her back. We basically had to be by her side 24 hours a day. Over the last three years, 54% of pediatric burns sent to the Burn and Reconstructive Centers of America were serious burns. Ramen noodles, coffee, tea, and bath water were the culprits. Felt so helpless, hopeless. Her daughter took to social media to share a message. I was at work having a horrible day, and so I was like, let me just look at my baby TikTok videos, and I came across her praying. Can I pray for you? In my name, Jesus, God, I hope you send the angel to send everybody that got burned by news words or anything hot. It may be hard to understand, but she's praying on TikTok for anyone who has experienced the same thing she has. She said, Mom, I want to be able to help somebody else out. It was hard to go to school with scars and what Tanika calls her ugly skin. But I just was covering my hand up. She wanted to make sure no one was alone, and healing comes with time. It'll get better one day at a time. She wants this to be a warning to other families, too. As parents, it's kind of hard to be there by your child's side 24-7. All I say is just take that extra moment to think about some of the items that you're allowing them to warm up or to fit. Now, Tanika's mom told us she still has some pain on her back, but doctors say she's healing up really quickly. I asked her if she's going to keep making those videos for people, and she says yes. Good for her for not making others feel so alone. More people on the roads, more people in the air this Christmas week. But how to survive the holiday travel, hustle and bustle. The Augusta Airport hopes it has a few ways to help this busy season. Riley? Well, we're looking at some cold mornings at least through Friday, but heading into our Christmas day, we are looking at a big warm-up. Full forecast just after the break. Since 1716, you'll be glad you did. A live look over the gateway to Grovetown this evening. Starting tomorrow, you could see a lot more drivers on the road with you. AAA is predicting more than 109 million people will travel 50 miles or more between tomorrow and January 2nd. Wow, and that's not just on the road, that's in the air too. Celeste Springer is live inside the Augusta Regional Airport. Celeste, over Thanksgiving, the TSA screened more people in a single day since the beginning of the pandemic. What's it looking like for Christmas? Well, right here in the airport right now for travelers that are headed out tonight, it's looking pretty good so far. No lines over there, over here uh, where you go to check your bags. There's a couple people sitting around waiting, but I'm sure they'll be in and out in just a couple minutes. But let's face it, lines or no lines, holiday travel is stressful to say the least, but there's some people working to take a load off. Headed out and headed here, odds are you won't see as much craziness as a month ago. Normally, Thanksgiving would see a rush a couple days, and for Christmas, it's a slow trickle. A slow trickle, but high volume. TSA screened 2.2 million people in one single day last week. The airlines, they have been almost completely booked, which we're happy to, to see. So, you're excited to go home. But getting there can be a headache. It'll lower your blood pressure, and people just enjoy being around dogs. That's where they come in. He just kind of makes you happy to see him, you know. 
People just like to, to touch him and play with him. Therapy dogs are back at the airport. Last Christmas, because of the pandemic, they had to stay home, but they stayed home. They were welcomed back with open arms. I've had people tell me that they would like to take my dog on the plane with them. And while traveling can be a bit, oh, wow, what she said, these dogs take a bit of the weight off. Sometimes people don't take the time to visit with the dogs, but they walk by and smile, and that's worth it. Because this right here, this is what the holidays are all about. And guys, I know these uh, short lines can make you feel like you can kind of cut it close when you're headed out to the airport. But keep in mind, the Augusta Airport does suggest that you arrive prior to your flight about an hour to an hour and a half, or excuse, yes, excuse me, an hour and a half to two hours rather early. Yes, because anything can happen. There are delays, all sorts of things. You want to get on the plane on time and with plenty of time to spare. That's right, and you just never know. You never know if the lines are going to be long. You never right. know if they're going to be short. And hey, if you get there early, you have enough time to play with those dogs. I know, which is taking all the stress away. Thanks, Celeste. Always love seeing dogs in a newscast. Anyway, we can get them in, right? Mm -hmm. We love them. <laughs> we love them. We're going to give you a live look now over Bobby Jones and I.